Hey, have you ever wondered why people tend to procrastinate so much? It's like we delay important tasks even when we know we shouldn't. Procrastination can be a real productivity killer. I think there are various psychological factors at play. For starters, fear of failure can lead us to put things off. That's true. Sometimes, we're afraid that we won't meet our own expectations or those of others. So, instead of facing the possibility of failure, we postpone taking action altogether. Exactly. It's like we believe that by postponing, we can avoid the potential negative outcome. But in reality, it just creates unnecessary stress and hampers our progress. I also think perfectionism plays a role in procrastination. When we set impossibly high standards, we get overwhelmed and end up delaying tasks to avoid falling short. Absolutely. The desire for perfection can be paralyzing. We may convince ourselves that we need more time to ensure flawless results even if it means delaying the task indefinitely. It's interesting how our mood and emotions can influence our tendency to procrastinate too. When we're feeling down or unmotivated, it becomes easier to put off tasks. That's true. Negative emotions can make us seek immediate comfort or distraction, leading us to choose short-term gratification over long-term goals. It becomes a cycle that's hard to break. Right. And then there's the issue of poor time management. When we don't prioritize tasks effectively or set realistic deadlines, we end up procrastinating out of sheer disorganization. Without clear goals and deadlines, it's easy to lose track of time and put off important tasks until the last minute. It's a recipe for stress and decreased productivity. I think another factor is the lack of intrinsic motivation. When we don't find personal fulfillment or enjoyment in a task, we're more likely to procrastinate and prioritize other activities. Yes, that's true. When we don't see the value or relevance of a task, it becomes harder to muster the motivation to start or complete it. It's all about finding meaning in what we do. So, how do we overcome procrastination and improve our productivity? Are there any strategies that have worked for you? One strategy that has helped me is breaking tasks into smaller, manageable steps. By setting realistic goals and focusing on one step at a time, it becomes less overwhelming. That makes sense. It's easier to get started when we have a clear plan and can see progress along the way. I find that setting deadlines and holding myself accountable also helps. Absolutely. Creating a schedule and sticking to it can be really effective. And it's important to give ourselves breaks and rewards to maintain motivation and avoid burnout. I agree. Self-care and managing our energy levels are crucial. When we're well-rested and taking care of ourselves, it's easier to stay focused and motivated to tackle tasks head-on. Definitely. It's also helpful to identify and challenge our negative thoughts and beliefs about tasks. By reframing them in a positive light, we can reduce anxiety and boost motivation. True. Changing our mindset and cultivating a growth mindset can make a big difference. Instead of focusing on the fear of failure, we can view challenges as opportunities for growth. Procrastination is a complex issue, but with self-awareness, effective strategies, and perseverance, we can overcome it and unlock our true potential for productivity. Yes. By understanding the psychology behind procrastination, we can take control of our actions and achieve greater success. Have you ever noticed how procrastination and creativity seem to have a complex relationship? Some people claim that procrastination fuels their creative processes, while others find it to be a hindrance. It's a fascinating topic. 
I think it depends on the individual and the nature of the creative task. Procrastination may provide a temporary sense of relief, but it can also lead to unnecessary stress. That's true. Some argue that procrastination allows ideas to incubate and that the pressure of a looming deadline can spark bursts of creativity. However, it's important to distinguish between productive procrastination and unproductive delay. Productive procrastination can involve engaging in activities that stimulate the mind or promote creative thinking. It's a way of giving ourselves a break from direct work while still allowing space for new ideas to emerge. Absolutely. Engaging in activities like taking walks, exploring new environments, or engaging in unrelated creative pursuits can help stimulate fresh perspectives and ignite inspiration. On the other hand, unproductive delay can result in wasted time and increased anxiety. When we consistently put off tasks without purpose or intention, it can hinder creativity and lead to a cycle of stress. That's true. It's important to be mindful of the line between productive and unproductive procrastination. While a healthy break can enhance creativity, constantly delaying tasks without purpose can inhibit our creative potential. I think self-awareness plays a significant role. Understanding our own creative processes and learning how procrastination affects our productivity can help us find a balance that works for us. Definitely. By recognizing how procrastination impacts our creative output, we can develop strategies to manage it effectively. This might involve setting realistic deadlines, breaking tasks into smaller steps, or seeking accountability. Accountability is crucial. Sharing our creative goals and progress with others can provide the necessary motivation and support to combat procrastination. It helps us stay on track and maintain momentum in our creative endeavors. Collaboration can also be valuable. Working with others can provide fresh perspectives and help us stay accountable. It allows for diverse input and can reignite our creative energy. Absolutely. Collaborative projects can create a sense of shared responsibility and motivate us to overcome procrastination. The exchange of ideas and collective effort can enhance the creative process. Another strategy is to establish a creative routine. By dedicating regular time for creative work, we can develop a habit and minimize the temptation to procrastinate. It's about creating structure and consistency. That's true. A routine can provide a framework for creativity to thrive. By making creativity a priority and committing to regular practice, we build discipline and reduce the tendency to procrastinate. It's important to remember that creativity is a journey, and it's not always linear. Embracing the ebb and flow of inspiration and allowing ourselves to have periods of rest or incubation can be beneficial. Definitely. Sometimes, taking a step back and allowing ourselves to recharge can lead to breakthroughs and renewed creativity. It's about finding a balance between active creation and necessary periods of reflection. I agree. It's crucial to give ourselves permission to take breaks and recharge without guilt. By allowing ourselves time for rest and rejuvenation, we create a supportive environment for creativity to flourish. Ultimately, the relationship between procrastination and creativity is highly individual. It's important to explore what works best for us and to adapt our approach as needed. Embracing self-awareness and experimentation can lead to a healthier and more productive creative process. Absolutely. Let's embrace our unique creative journeys and find strategies that enhance our productivity while also allowing for the ebb and flow of inspiration. By managing procrastination effectively, we can nurture our creative potential and achieve greater artistic fulfillment. 
Hey, do you ever struggle with procrastination? I find it challenging to manage my time effectively and stay on top of tasks. Procrastination can be a real obstacle to productivity. But there are strategies we can use to overcome it. One technique that works for me is breaking tasks into smaller, manageable chunks. That's a great idea. It's easier to get started when we have a clear plan and can tackle tasks one step at a time. I find that setting deadlines and creating a schedule also helps me stay focused. Definitely. Setting realistic deadlines creates a sense of urgency and helps us prioritize tasks. By assigning specific time slots for different activities, we can manage our time more efficiently. I agree. It's important to be mindful of our energy levels too. I find that I'm most productive when I work on challenging tasks during my peak concentration times and save easier tasks for when I'm feeling less focused. That's a smart approach. It's also crucial to minimize distractions. I try to create a dedicated workspace where I can focus solely on the task at hand without the temptation of distractions like social media or TV. Absolutely. It's amazing how easily we can get sidetracked. By removing distractions and creating a conducive environment for work, we can enhance our productivity and reduce the urge to procrastinate. Another technique that has worked for me is practicing self-discipline. It's about setting clear boundaries and holding myself accountable. For example, I use timers or the Pomodoro technique to stay focused for specific intervals. I've heard of the Pomodoro technique. It's a great way to break tasks into manageable chunks and maintain productivity. I'll definitely give it a try. I also find it helpful to visualize the end result and the benefits of completing a task. Visualization is powerful. When we can imagine the satisfaction and rewards that come from completing a task, it becomes easier to stay motivated and avoid procrastination. It's about connecting with our long-term goals. Exactly. And it's important to be kind to ourselves during this process. We're bound to have off days or encounter setbacks. By practicing self-compassion and embracing a growth mindset, we can bounce back and keep moving forward. That's a great point. Instead of beating ourselves up for past procrastination, we should focus on learning from it and making improvements going forward. It's all about progress, not perfection. Absolutely. And seeking support can make a big difference too. Whether it's finding an accountability partner, joining a study group, or seeking guidance from a mentor, having a support system can help us stay motivated and on track. I couldn't agree more. Sharing our goals and progress with others creates a sense of responsibility and makes us more likely to follow through. It's also helpful to surround ourselves with positive and motivated individuals. Yes, surrounding ourselves with like-minded individuals who are also striving for productivity can be inspiring and uplifting. It creates an environment that encourages growth and discourages procrastination. Lastly, I think it's important to regularly review and reflect on our goals and priorities. By periodically assessing our progress, we can make necessary adjustments and stay aligned with our long-term vision. Reflecting on our goals allows us to stay focused and reassess whether our current actions are aligned with our desired outcomes. It helps us make better choices and avoid getting caught up in unimportant tasks. Overcoming procrastination requires effort and commitment, but it's definitely possible. By implementing these strategies and finding what works best for us individually, we can develop better time management skills and improve our overall productivity. I couldn't agree more. 
Let's make a conscious effort to overcome procrastination and unlock our full potential. Together, we can support each other on this journey towards greater productivity and personal growth. Have you ever noticed how perfectionism and procrastination often go hand in hand? It seems like the fear of not meeting high standards can paralyze us and hinder progress. You're right. The desire for perfection can be a major obstacle to productivity. We become so focused on achieving flawless results that we end up delaying tasks indefinitely. It's like we convince ourselves that we need more time to ensure perfection, even if it means missing deadlines or not starting at all. The fear of falling short becomes overwhelming. Exactly. We set impossibly high standards for ourselves, and when we realize that meeting them is challenging, we procrastinate as a way to avoid facing potential failure. I think another aspect of perfectionism is the fear of judgment. We worry about what others will think if our work is not up to their expectations or our own unrealistically high standards. That's true. We become overly concerned with how others perceive us in our work. This fear of criticism or disapproval can cause us to delay tasks or even avoid them altogether. It's important to recognize that perfectionism is often an unattainable goal. No one is perfect, and striving for perfection can lead to unnecessary stress and decrease productivity. Definitely. So, how can we manage our perfectionistic tendencies and overcome procrastination? Have you found A strategies that work for you? One technique that has helped me is shifting my mindset from perfection to progress. Instead of striving for flawless results, I focus on continuous improvement and embracing the learning process. That's a great approach. By emphasizing progress, we shift our attention from the end result to the steps we take along the way. It helps us appreciate growth and reduces the pressure for perfection. Another strategy is setting realistic goals and deadlines. Instead of aiming for perfection, I focus on completing tasks to the best of my ability within a reasonable time frame. I agree. By setting achievable goals and deadlines, we create a sense of structure and avoid getting caught up in endless revisions or overthinking. It helps us maintain momentum and avoid unnecessary delays. It's also important to challenge our inner critic and negative self-talk. When we catch ourselves striving for perfection, we can reframe our thoughts and remind ourselves that mistakes are a natural part of the learning process. Absolutely. Being kind to ourselves and practicing self-compassion is crucial. We need to acknowledge that making mistakes is an opportunity for growth and that we can learn from them. Seeking feedback from others can also be helpful. By gaining different perspectives, we can gain valuable insights and improve our work. It takes the pressure off solely relying on our own judgment. That's true. Constructive feedback can provide guidance and help us refine our work. It's important to remember that feedback is not a reflection of our self-worth but an opportunity for growth. Another technique I find useful is breaking down tasks into smaller, more manageable steps. It helps me focus on each component and prevents me from getting overwhelmed by the big picture. I agree. Breaking tasks into smaller steps allows us to make progress without being consumed by the need for perfection. It helps us stay organized and motivated as we achieve small victories along the way. Ultimately, managing perfectionism and overcoming procrastination requires self-awareness and practice. It's about finding a healthy balance between striving for excellence and acknowledging our limitations. Definitely. It's important to remember that progress and growth are more valuable than perfection. 
By embracing imperfections and taking consistent action, we can overcome the tendency to procrastinate and achieve our goals. Have you ever noticed how self-discipline plays a crucial role in combating procrastination? It's like having the willpower and control to overcome the temptation to delay tasks. Yes. Procrastination often stems from a lack of self-discipline. When we give in to instant gratification or distractions, it becomes challenging to stay focused and complete tasks on time. That's true. Self-discipline is all about making conscious choices and sticking to them, even when it's difficult or inconvenient. It's about prioritizing long-term goals over short-term desires. I find that creating a routine and sticking to it helps improve self-discipline. By establishing regular habits and following through with them, we train our minds to become more disciplined and focused. Definitely. A structured routine provides a sense of stability and minimizes decision fatigue. It helps us stay on track and reduces the likelihood of succumbing to procrastination. Another strategy that works for me is setting clear goals and breaking them down into actionable steps. By knowing exactly what needs to be done, I can better focus my efforts and maintain self-discipline. That's a great approach. Clear goals provide a sense of direction and purpose. When we have a clear vision of what we want to achieve, it becomes easier to stay disciplined and motivated. I also find it helpful to minimize distractions and create an environment conducive to focus. By removing temptations and establishing a designated workspace, I can maintain better self-control. Absolutely. Distractions can easily derail our self-discipline and lead to procrastination. Creating a distraction-free environment allows us to stay focused and committed to completing our tasks. Another technique that I've found effective is practicing delayed gratification. Instead of indulging in immediate rewards, I delay them until after I've completed my tasks. It helps strengthen my self-discipline. That's a powerful technique. By delaying gratification, we train ourselves to prioritize responsibilities over instant rewards. It requires self-control, but the satisfaction of completing tasks becomes its own reward. It's also important to stay motivated and inspired. I find that setting reminders of my long-term goals and surrounding myself with positive influences keeps my self-discipline strong. I agree. Motivation plays a significant role in self-discipline. By regularly reminding ourselves of our aspirations and finding sources of inspiration, we can strengthen our resolve and maintain discipline. Additionally, I think self-care is crucial for enhancing self-discipline. When we prioritize our physical and mental well-being, we have more energy and mental clarity to stay focused and disciplined. Absolutely. Self-care is not selfish. It's essential for our overall well-being. Taking care of ourselves physically and mentally provides the foundation for maintaining self-discipline and combating procrastination. I find that accountability also plays a significant role in self-discipline. Sharing our goals and progress with someone we trust can help us stay motivated and committed to our tasks. That's true. Accountability adds an external layer of responsibility. When we have someone supporting us and holding us accountable, we're more likely to stay disciplined and follow through on our commitments. Ultimately, self-discipline is a skill that can be developed and strengthened over time. It requires practice, perseverance, and self-awareness. By implementing these strategies, we can improve our self-control and overcome procrastination. I couldn't agree more. It's a continuous process of self-improvement. Let's support each other on this journey towards greater self-discipline and productivity. Together, we can overcome the challenges of procrastination and achieve our goals. Absolutely. Let's encourage each other to stay disciplined, 
make conscious choices, and remain focused on our long-term vision. With self-discipline, we can unlock our full potential and accomplish great things. Have you noticed how technology and social media can contribute to procrastination? It's like we get easily distracted by the constant stream of notifications and the allure of online entertainment. Absolutely. The digital age has brought many benefits, but it has also created a breeding ground for procrastination. The ease of access to social media and entertainment can be incredibly tempting. It's become so easy to lose track of time and get caught up in mindless scrolling or watching endless videos. Before we know it, hours have passed, and we haven't made progress on our tasks. I think one of the first steps to combat digital distractions is to be aware of our habits. Recognizing how technology and social media impact our productivity is crucial for change. You're right. Awareness is key. We need to acknowledge how much time we spend on digital devices and the impact it has on our ability to focus and complete tasks. Setting boundaries is essential. Establishing designated times for using technology and social media can help minimize distractions and create a healthier balance between work and leisure. Absolutely. By defining specific periods for focused work or study, we can create a structure that reduces the temptation to constantly check our phones or engage in non-productive online activities. Another strategy that works is using productivity apps or browser extensions that block or limit access to distracting websites or apps. They can help create a digital environment that supports our productivity. That's a great suggestion. Utilizing technology to combat technology-induced distractions is a smart approach. By leveraging these tools, we can regain control over our online activities and stay focused. It's also important to practice digital decluttering. Regularly reviewing our digital spaces, such as our email inbox or smartphone apps, and removing unnecessary distractions can significantly improve productivity. Definitely. A cluttered digital environment can lead to overwhelm and hinder our ability to concentrate. By organizing files, deleting unnecessary apps, and decluttering our digital spaces, we create a more conducive environment for productivity. Additionally, practicing mindful usage of technology can be beneficial. Taking breaks from screens, practicing relaxation techniques, and engaging in offline activities can help recharge our focus and reduce the urge to procrastinate. That's a great point. It's important to find a balance between our digital lives and real-life experiences. Engaging in offline activities, connecting with nature, or spending quality time with loved ones can help reduce our reliance on digital distractions. I also find that adopting time management techniques can mitigate digital distractions. Methods like the Pomodoro technique, where we work in focused intervals and take short breaks, can improve productivity and limit the impact of digital distractions. Absolutely. The Pomodoro technique has been effective for many people. By breaking work into manageable chunks and allocating specific time intervals for focused work, we can stay productive while still allowing for brief digital breaks. Lastly, fostering self-discipline is crucial. By consciously choosing to prioritize our tasks and resisting the urge to constantly engage with technology, we can cultivate self-control and combat digital distractions. You're right. It's about developing the discipline to stay focused on our goals despite the allure of digital distractions. By consciously redirecting our attention to our tasks and resisting the impulse to check our devices, we can improve our productivity. Let's support each other in this digital age and hold ourselves accountable. 
By encouraging mindful usage, setting boundaries, and implementing effective strategies, we can overcome digital distractions and make significant strides in our productivity.